internet. A friend of mine online asked about how to set up realistic stage lights in After Effects for like a, like a gallery effect. I figured I would do a quick demo of that. First I'm going to need some paintings, so let's go to uh, Wikimedia Commons. Oil painting. All right, so we've got some high resolution images. Let's open up After Effects. After Effects just launched a new version, uh, I wanna say yesterday. So hopefully everything works. <laughs> All right, here we go. And uh, control I to import the images. So if we go in here, select all of these, import. Uh, internal verification error. You can only assign RGB profiles. I don't know what that means. Could not read from source. Please check the settings and try again. Okay. After Effects error. Cannot be imported. Ooh. Well, I got three out of the uh, four, so let's just <laughs> let's just go with that. Uh, click here to create a new composition, and let's do something kind of default. HD 1080 is fine for now. 24 frames a second. That's good. Let's make it, uh, let's just make it 30 seconds long, even. All right, black background is fine. Take these images and drop them in here. Ooh, they're big, that's good. So if you wanted to create a spotlight effect, there's a few ways you could do it. Um, you could go to layer, new, shape layer, grab the pen tool and add like a triangle fix some of the shape layer contents. So right now that's a shape layer with a fill and a stroke. I guess that was uh, the defaults I was working with before. But just turn off the stroke, change the color of the fill to white. Fix this anchor point, convert the vertex to just a hard vertex. So now we have this, sometimes it's hard to select the anchor point you wanna work with. G to get the pen tool again. Yeah, I could add another anchor point here drag it out, press Y and change the anchor point so it's more up here, and then hit R to rotate. Is it R? No, W? Yeah, W to rotate. Ooh. I guess the anchor point didn't change. There we go. W, and now it's kind of like a spotlight, but not the best. Anyways, you could um, bring up one of our paintings. All right, so we've got a painting here. Let's scale this guy down a little bit. Ooh. Grab that corner, hold shift, scale. All right, so now if you change this to, um, I don't know, add or something, that did nothing. How about uh, lighten? I wonder why the blending mode's not working. Let's just change the opacity. 50, there we go. Multiply, there we go. Add, yeah. All right, so that's kind of a goofy looking uh, spotlight effect. <laughs> not that useful, although you could totally make this work. Um, it would just take some finessing. Oh, here's the other thing you can um, you can fuzz this out with a uh, blur. There's my effects panel. So like uh, a fuzzy border on this. Uh, just say fast, fast blur, fast box blur. There we go. I could drop this on here and, and change this to uh, I don't know, you know, 10 or something. All right, play with the opacity. Um, you could even you know duplicate this and parent it over here. Change the blending mode and get real complicated with it. Um, also, uh, the question was how to add uh, dust to the light. So let's go ahead and go back out to the internet. I have a video blocks subscription. So let's see, dust overlay. If you don't have a video blocks subscription, you can, uh, not that I would recommend this, but you could just grab stuff right from YouTube or just find like a free a free uh, stock footage clip. Oh, this is kind of cool. That's smoky. I'll grab this one. I'm just gonna get the smallest one. Save it in a footage folder. When projects start to get big, uh, it helps to keep them organized. So now I can import that. All right, now I've got a dust footage. I can drag on here. If I change the blending mode on this, and I just want it, actually, color burn, what I want, maybe screen. Screen looks good, but I only want the dust where the, uh, where the light is. So there's a few ways to do this. The simplest way 
would be to duplicate your light and drag it above your footage layer and change the track mat, this column right here. Uh, track mats are super useful. Um, so now the dust is, is being masked out by the uh, shape layer. Here's the problem. If this, uh, if this shape layer here is animated, then the dust stays over there. So you can fix that by just parenting your mat layer to the actual spotlight layer or something like that. Let's animate the rotation property just so we can see. Go up to like two or three seconds. Actually, let's make it a little faster. And go back. All right, and make these easy ease. I really wish After Effects made key keyframes easy ease by default. Uh, I rarely ever use the flat interpolation, but. All right, so now if I go to this point in the timeline and I hit N on the keyboard, it'll just play that part of the timeline. So let's see how that looks. That's fine. Maybe that dust could be a little faster. So here's a quick way to do that. You can just, uh, you can just squeeze it down like that. Speed it up a little bit like that. All right, that's not too bad. Looks super fake though, right? Real cheesy. So um, here, let's, uh, let's start over. Comp two. Uh, so that's one way to do it. There's also uh, Spotlight. I don't, I'm not actually sure what Spotlight does. I never use this effect. Uh, there's a million effects in After Effects and uh, you know, you got your favorites, so. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, okay, so it's like a fake 3D Spotlight. Yeah, so maybe you could, um, and what do you have here? The From and the Two. All right, so you could mess with this stuff. Height, cone angle. That, that's pretty cool, actually. So like. Maybe you could combine the, the CC Spotlight with this thing to get a more realistic effect, but I'm gonna show you a, a much better way, I think. Let's uh, bring our painting objects back in. Let's change them to 3D layers. So this little box icon right here, we're gonna make sure that they're all 3D. And then, um, I forget the keyboard shortcut. Is it Control-Alt-Y? No, that's adjustment layer. Control-Shift-Y. Oh, it's Control-Shift-L. Nope, nope, there we go. <laughs> Control Alt Shift L uh, creates a new light. So a light is kind of like a camera. It's a 3D object or 2.5D or whatever it is, but it acts like a real light. There we go. So now we have this light. I can uh, grab it, move it around. Actually what I'll do too is split the view. Anytime you're working with 3D objects in After Effects, you can kind of get lost if you're just stuck in this flat view. Go ahead and, you know, you can split the view four ways if you want. Uh, I tend to use just two. This is the top view. If you want to change that, you can look left or right or whatever. Let's turn this off there. Now we can see a little better. So this is the painting. If you select these, we can, we can move them around in the coordinate space, X, Y, and Z. Let's distribute the paintings a little bit so that we can see each of them. Just drag it over like that, select the other one, drag this over, okay. So now the paintings are spread out. Um, another thing I would recommend is uh, to create a camera. So I'm pretty sure that's Control, Control Shift Alt C. All right, so now we have a camera. Um, if you don't wanna learn the keyboard shortcuts, uh, you can just go to Layer, New, and the light, the light is right here and the camera's right here, oh, and there's the keyboard shortcuts, so you don't have to memorize them. Actually, the other thing I will recommend is to create a new uh, null. That's a solid control. It's funny how the uh, muscle memory goes away as soon as I'm talking about how to do this stuff. There we go. Control, Alt, Shift, uh, Y creates a null layer. All right, a null layer is just like a placeholder layer. Um, you use them for all kinds of stuff. So make sure that's 3D. All right, so now the null object is right here and I'm gonna parent the camera to the null. Um, and the reason you do this is just for more flexibility with your camera, I would say. Now you've got this null object and we're just gonna back this out. This light, I want to kind of be on top of the painting. That actually looks really cool though. All right, now I'll grab the light. Okay, so you can see that that's, uh, that's basically working. Let's create a floor real fast. So um, control Y to create a solid layer. Let's make it black or just like really dark gray. Okay, uh, make it 3D. 
All right, so it's uh, it's right there in the middle of the composition, and then just uh, change the rotation. When you make a layer, a 3D layer, you'll get uh, Z rotation in addition to X and Y. Uh, also orientation. It doesn't seem to matter which one you use, the orientation or the X, Y, Z rotation. Negative 90 degrees, grab it and scoot it down like so, so it's on the floor. And let's scale it up really big. There we go, now we got a floor. Um, let me grab this light, go into this view, top, select the left side, and scoot it up, rotate it, we'll rotate W. There we go. Okay, uh, grab this light, should be able to just grab it. There we go. Um, there's all kinds of settings you can tweak in here, the light options. I think there's an option to make the light visible, uh, cast shadows by default, cone angle would be a big one. So if it's more like a gallery light, it would be more like this. Drag it over a little bit more. I wanna say there's a option for um, dust, but I don't see that now. What you could do is um, duplicate this light, uh, control D and scoot it over here, uh, duplicate it again and scoot here. All right. Go back to the uh, top view. Ah, look at that. So just position them a little bit. All right, cool. One view. All right, so now you've got um, a gallery, more or less. Um, the dust. I wonder what we could do with the dust. Let's grab that footage I had before. Okay. And um, let's make that 3D. Now it's too small, but that's okay. We'll just scale it up. Yeah, okay. That's that's gonna work, I think. Uh, see how the lights are illuminating that dust? Um, let's go back into our two views, bring that dust footage. If I bring it too far forward, the lights aren't gonna illuminate it, so I'll just bring the dust footage layer right in front of the paintings. Now I can just change the blending mode of this to, uh, what is it, screen? Cool. Let me turn the resolution up to uh, half. Yeah, that doesn't look quite right. I don't know, it's not bad. That's the basic idea. Um, let's let's add a little uh, animation to the camera. Home, just scale out in Z. All right, let's see how that looks. I'm just adjusting the, uh, the easing real quick. There you go. Kind of cool, right? That is a dusty, <laughs> very dusty uh, art gallery. <laughs> Too much dust. Um, there's a there's a few things you could do. Uh, the more fine-tuned but more time-consuming approach would be to take this dust layer, um, maybe scale it down like so. Uh, you know, rotate it or whatever. Whoops. Rotate it. Actually, your dust will be floating the wrong way if you do that, but you could you could scale it down uh, and you could actually, uh, if you grab your pen tool, pen tool, right here, uh, you could mask this thing out manually and even uh, if you go into your mask, animate the mask and it's really annoying, but it gives you a lot of control. See, so I can actually, you know, you can change the, the shape of the mask and so then you know, you're doing all this stuff to just make it look uh, just perfect, but let's undo that. Let's get rid of this mask. So if I wanted to just keep one footage layer, I would uh, probably get a levels effect and crunch these levels down. So let me isolate this, this little white button, isolate. I can squeeze the levels down, maybe this way. There we go. You can play with the levels, you know, making um, the dust kind of look a little smaller, but higher contrast something like that. So the dust, those dust particles are still too big. So what else could you do? Yeah, the dust is still way too big. Maybe it would be a good idea to just duplicate this a couple times and then scale them all down. Take this one over here, slide over here. Uh, these two dust layers are, are overlapping. So, let me just grab the middle dust layer and uh, Q brings up the square mask tool. Just mask this like so. All right. 
Okay, see, there's, I got another edge here. You might, you probably can't see it on the um, exported video, but I am going to go into that mask and adjust the feather to like, you know, 50 or something. That's a bit better. Let's make it 75. Okay. All right, so now if we play this, we've got lights. We've got dust. Oh, the dust is looking nice now. I'm sure you can't see any of this on the exported video. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, um, I think I think the original question too was to make this cone light visible. So let me just double check in the options. Uh, I know in after uh, Cinema 4D, there's definitely an option to make the light visible, but I'm not seeing it here. Yeah, so. What would you do there? I really want to say there's a way to do it uh, directly in the light options. Uh, there very well could be. That's worth a Google search for sure. But um, another thing you could do, which would be kind of a hack, but uh, let's control Y to create a solid layer. We'll make it white this time. Uh, okay, and make it 3D. All right, so room's just rotated. Rotate it up like this. Scale it up. All right, and maybe we change the apply. <laughs> That's not right. Add. Okay, and then you can adjust the opacity on this. There you go. I don't know. That looks yuck to me, <laughs> but if the client wants it, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you got to do that. All right, that's it for this little tutorial. Uh, I will take this project file and put it on my GitHub. Uh, I will delete the video blocks uh, footage file because uh, I, I'm not supposed to share that with the world. If you've got any Adobe Creative Suite questions, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn and places. Talk to you next time.